Hello, welcome back. The topic of this lecture and of the next several lectures after it is what happens when you have a basis of eigenvalues. So we've seen that bases are collections of vectors which are very good for computing in. And we've talked a lot about orthonormal bases and their advantages. And we've talked about eigenvectors. And now we're going to talk about what happens when you have a basis of eigenvectors. So let A be an n by n matrix. Let v1, v2, blah, 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 vk be some eigenvectors. Let the eigenvalues be lambda 1, lambda 2, blah, 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 lambda k. And we saw before that if w is in the span of v1, v2, vk, then we have a simple formula for a to the n times w that looked like this. You write w as a linear combination of the v's, and then when you multiply by a to the n, you just put lambda to the n in front of each v. So what we now want to talk about is if we have a basis of eigenvectors, what does this look like in the coordinates of that basis of eigenvectors? And a basis of eigenvectors is what we are going to call an eigenbasis. And eigenbases are the subject not just of this lecture, but of the next several lectures. Okay, so A is an n by n square matrix. V1 through Vn is an eigenbasis. A times V is lambda V. And I'll use this uh, German Gothic B for the basis V1 through Vn. So remember how our... Um, our coordinate notation works. If we write the vector vj in the basis b, that means we just put a 1 in the jth position, and 0 is everywhere else. And more generally, if we have some w, since v is a basis, we could write w as a linear combination of the v's in a unique way. And the coefficients of that linear combination are w written in the basis is b. Okay, now we have the equation that a v j is lambda j v j. So remember, the jth column of a tells you what happens to the jth basis vector. Um, so the jth basis, so the jth column of a in the basis b is going to be a bunch of zeros, lambda j, bunch of zeros. And so a is going to be a diagonal matrix with these lambdas on the diagonal. Now, so earlier we had this equation that if we write a vector like this as a linear combination of the v's and multiply it by a, then the coefficient of each v just multiplies by lambda. Let's rewrite that in, uh, in the coordinates of our basis. Here's the matrix A in B coordinates. Here's the vector in B coordinates. And here's the output vector in B coordinates. And sure enough, this is a true equation of matrices. Uh, we've seen that eigenvectors are really good for raising things to powers. So when we take a teeth power of the matrix A in the B coordinates, we're just going to take a teeth power of the entries on this diagonal. Uh, if you found the section on coordinates sort of confusing and difficult, here's a way to rewrite it with fewer concepts but more symbols. So let's let S be the matrix whose columns are the Vs. And I'm going to rewrite the equations a v j equals lambda v j as a single matrix equation. So that equation says if I multiply a times s, so s is the matrix whose columns are the v's, then I'm going to get a v1, a v2, blah, 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 a v n, which is lambda 1 v1, blah, 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 lambda n v n, because they're eigenvalues, oh, sorry, because they're eigenvectors. And we can just rewrite that as that's the matrix whose columns are v's, times on the right by the diagonal matrix of lambdas, or in other words, s times the lambdas. And so taking the inverse of s, multiplying both, multiplying both this and this side of the equation by s inverse on the right, we see that a is s diagonal matrix s inverse. And since this matrix is diagonal, I'm going to shorthand it to d, a is s d s inverse. Let's rewrite our formula for powers of A using this SDS inverse language. A to the T is SDS inverse to the T, 
which means SDS inverse times SDS inverse times blah, 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 times SDS inverse, T times. Uh, it's important to remember what order the factors go in here because matrix multiplication is not commutative, but matrix multiplication is associative, so I can erase the parentheses. I just have SDS inverse, SDS inverse, blah, 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 SDS inverse. Each time that we see an S set of S inverse, they cancel each other out. The so V's cancel. This S inverse cancels the S after it. This S has an S inverse in front of it that cancels it. So only the ones at the start and the end survive. And we get S D D D D D D D D S inverse, which is S D to the T S inverse. And similarly, let's rewrite our equation a v j is lambda j v j one more time. So v j is s times the vector zero, one in the jth position, all the rest zero. Right? The columns of the matrix s are what happens when you put in the standard basis vectors. So a v j is s d s inverse times s times this vector. Again, the s inverse and the s cancel. We're left with s d times this. A diagonal matrix just rescales the coordinates. So it's S times bunch of zeros, lambda J, bunch of zeros, which is again, lambda J, V, J. And in general, any equation that you have about eigenvectors and eigenvalues, one good way to think about it is to put A equals S, D, S inverse and see how that simplifies things for you. And we will stop there.